Now we're going to look at another method for getting approximate solutions to the Schrodinger equation for systems which we cannot solve it exactly. And this is called perturbation theory. So in perturbation theory, we have a Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi, say for some given state n within uh, the system. And the exact solution to this is unknown. The exact value of these energies and the exact form of these wave functions is unknown. But what we do know is a reference system which looks kind of close to this system. So maybe the Hamiltonian is just a little bit different. And we have this reference system where this h naught psi naught equals e naught psi naught. And there's the less difference there is between these two systems, the smaller the perturbation is, the better the result we can get using perturbation theory. So in perturbation theory, we have a total Hamiltonian, h in green here, and that is written as a sum of a reference Hamiltonian, h0, for which we can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly, and a perturbation term, or some addition to usually the potential energy, uh, v here. And I'm using the symbol, kind of this uh, curly v here, so that we don't get that confused with the potential energy operator. So uh, sometimes if you see it in this form, it might be somewhat confusing, but just remember that the perturbation is kind of this curly script V and the potential energy operator is just kind of a standard Roman style V. Okay, so what we're gonna get here is that our energies, that is our solutions, there are eigenvalues for the full Schrodinger equation for this problem is going to be a sum of successive corrections to the energy. So we start out with just this E naught. And so we start out with the energy to the reference system. And then you add on successive corrections to it to whichever order you want. So if we did first order perturbation theory, that would just be adding on this E1. Second order would be adding on this E2, etc. Go up to as many orders in perturbation theory as you want. The only difficulty is that it gets the math gets more and more complicated as you go up in order there. And similarly, our wave functions, our psi n's, are going to be successive corrections as well. Psi for the true uh, system is going to be the wave function for the unperturbed system, the reference system, plus successive corrections at varying orders of the perturbation theory. So in the next video, we're going to derive how we get these uh, expressions for what these energies and wave functions are. But now let me just go ahead and spoil it for our first order perturbation theory. So for the zero order energy, the reference system, so E naught N, we know that that would just be N star H naught N, that would be that integral there. Well, for the first order energy, it's just going to be that the first order correction to the energy, this correction term here, is going to be the state N and N star getting acted on by the perturbation a Hamiltonian by the by the perturbation operator times n. So this integral here, this integral over all space of n star v n. And then a slightly more involved form for what the wave function ends up being for the this first order correction of the wave function. We're going to look at this less, but I'll just mention it so you can see the type of form this generally appears in. It's a sum over all of the states, except for where m equals n, of the integral m star v n over the difference in energy between e and m at zero order times that wave function m. So we can see uh, usually in the form for the wave function corrections, you're going to get a sum, you're going to get an integral on top involving the perturbation operator, and you're going to get a denominator, which is the difference in energy between the two states. But in this video, we're just focused on the basics here of what this Hamiltonian is and what the reference is and what the perturbation is. So let's look at a couple example systems here. Let's look at this for the anharmonic oscillator. 
which I've gotten over here, and for the particle in a slanted box, which we looked at in the previous video using the linear variational method. Okay, so for our, what color should I use? We'll use this purple color. Okay, for the anharmonic oscillator, you're gonna have a Hamiltonian, which is the kinetic energy of the particle, minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x, plus 1 half kx squared, the harmonic term, then plus however many more anharmonic terms you want, plus 1 6 gamma 3x cubed, plus 1 24th gamma 4x to the 4th, etc. And what we can break this into is we have our reference Hamiltonian, which is the, the harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian. So this would be, actually, don't want to use that color. I want to use the same color as the reference Hamiltonian. Okay, our reference Hamiltonian H naught here is that. And our perturbation is the anharmonic term, which is going to be there the cubic and quartic terms, which make it deviate away from this blue harmonic type term. For the particle in a slanted box, our Hamiltonian is going to be minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x, the kinetic energy, plus v naught x over l, where v naught is the height of this well on the right side, this deviation away from the particle in a box which has no potential energy to the particle in a slanted box which has a slanted potential energy function within the box. And this we would just break into the particle in a box Hamiltonian which is just the kinetic energy part which is our H naught there and our perturbation is the slanting part of the potential energy which is our V there. Okay so that's perturbation theory in a nutshell. We've got some known, some unknown uh, Schrodinger equation, which we don't know the wave function and energies for. We've got a known reference function. We break our Hamiltonian into the total Hamiltonian as a sum of the reference Hamiltonian plus a perturbation. And this gives us a series of successive corrections to both the energies and the wave functions so we can get at better and better approximations for what the true wave function of this unknown system is as we go to higher and higher orders in the perturbation.